Okay, so in this episode, I am picking up another one of the cars on my bucket list. I've always wanted a first generation Honda Fit because they're fun, sporty, and they remind me of Japanese JDM K cars that you would find overseas. However, it's something that we had in the US and they only came out for two years, 07 and 08. And for that reason, it is very difficult to find a clean, rust-free version of the first gen Fit in Michigan or in the Rust Belt area. For that reason, I was looking down south, of course, in Georgia, Atlanta, I actually found one and it was a good price. And lo and behold, of all places, it was at a dealership. I usually don't buy cars from dealerships because I like to buy cars that need big services such as an engine out or transmission service. But in this case, the price was good, it looked good, so I decided to fly down sight unseen and pick up the car. Okay, so while you guys get to see the footage of me passing over several states to travel down to Atlanta from Detroit, I can tell you a quick story about once I landed. So I touched down and I had to find an Uber right away to get to the dealership, which was about an hour and 10 minutes away. So I ended up finding an Uber, but once I contracted the vehicle, the price of my Uber jumped from like $53 to $80. So I actually ended up asking the driver, what is the reason that this happened? And he was super cool about it. He actually said, hey, if you want to end the trip right now and just pay me cash on the side, I'll actually cut you a huge discount and we can bypass Uber altogether. And I said, that's awesome. After that, we started talking for a long time. Turns out he's a big car flipper also. And we decided that for now on, I am not gonna go see these cars on sight unseen in Atlanta. He's gonna check them out for me and be my guys with boots on the ground to be able to tell me and give me videos and show me exactly what I need to see about the car so I'm making a more educated purchase. All right, I'm here at the dealership and uh, went over the car. There's a couple of things I'm having the guys fix. But while I'm here, I had to check out this CRV. I'm sure this is an RD2. Yes, it is. It is not an all wheel drive because there is no all wheel drive sticker right here. One of the only ways that you can tell is by looking at the outside, but it's a pretty clean car. Here we are with the car. Um, you know, from the outside, it actually looks pretty okay, but once you get up close, you can see, you know, it's still at the end of the day almost 20 years old and has over 200,000 miles. So, definitely got some scrapes and bumps and bruises but it's still a clean car no issues overall so we're gonna wait for the title to get over here and then we're gonna get out okay guys so far the fit is everything I thought it would be I absolutely love this simple interior the five-speed manual is great it's awesome on these back country hilly roads it is quiet it is comfortable it is smooth it's got everything I need, you know what I mean? As far as options go, I don't need a fancy gizmos to keep me in my lane or to make sure I don't rear end somebody. All I need is this. I mean, I got power windows, power locks, keyless entry. We got AC, heat, uh, you know, radio with a aux input. What else do you need? This is all the basic essentials that you would want to have for a daily driver and still have a good time. So for 3,000 bucks, which is what I paid for this car at the dealership, mind you, this wasn't a private sale, this was at a dealership. This is a one owner, uh, 213, I believe that is. Yup, 213,000 miles on this puppy. But it runs like a fucking top, and, and it should because this is a one owner car. So obviously it was well cared for. If someone bought it brand new in 2008 and they are, Clearly, you know, they traded it in uh, just about three months ago at a dealership to a Kia dealership. And if they had it for 16 years or uh, or whatever, how I, I think that's the what math right there, then that tells you right there that the car at least was taken care of and loved and they probably maintained it, which I know they did because they ran a Carfax, but they probably would maintain it to prioritize the longevity of it and to make sure that you can have this car for years and years to come. But at some point people get board of their daily commuter car and then you end up like this. You end up with a car that is awesome for somebody else because it is perfectly at a price point and drived enough and maintained enough to know that, okay, this car is gonna last three, 350,000 miles and I still have plenty of life left in it, but it's at a price point where I can afford it 
and it's going to be an easy, fun car to drive and still get 40 miles to the gallon. A little bit ago, I went and picked up this uh, Francesco Cars Power Wheels from a guy down here in Atlanta. It was already planned out. And he said, so where are you headed to? I said, Detroit. He said, wow, what are you doing down here? I said, I picked up a car. You know, I flew down here this morning and now I am just purchased this vehicle and I'm now I'm getting this car thing for you and I'm heading back home. He said, my God, you know, there's so many people that do that. You know, we don't like selling to people in the North because we get their rusty cars and they take all of our good cars. And I was like, oh shoot, that's exactly what I'm doing. He's like, yeah, you're not alone. Well, you know what? I'm doing it now and I'm doing it with your little Francesco car too. So take that, you know, I'm just saying like, yeah, there's a formula, of course. We all know if you live in the Midwest, if you live in the Rust Belt, if you live in the Salt Belt, if you live in the winter, you're gonna get some rust on your car. And if you don't want that, then you gotta go down south. You gotta find something that's rust free like this. Check the Carfax, make sure it always spent its life down in the south. Just because it, you buy it from Florida, Georgia, Alabama, doesn't mean it always came from there. You can get cars from New York or, uh, you know, Michigan up in up in the southern or down in the southern states too because you know people can buy them cheap up north and bring them down and then people get that's what the guy was actually telling me he's like we don't like it because we get stuck with your guys cars and we think that from georgia it's going to be a good car and then all of a sudden you realize it's from up north yada 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 i was like listen stop dogging me for taking your cars because we need this stuff we need these good rust-free analog manual transmission cars. Another reason why I love this fit is because look at how much room it has back there. I bought the Francesco power wheels and basically this thing has a ton of room. I folded down the seats but I didn't even need to because I don't know if you can see this, it would have actually fit just fine in the trunk compartment alone, a full-size power wheels. I do have the back seats folded but I plan to flip those up now and I still have a ton of room, you know. I'm six foot three and I am not cramped in this cabin at all whatsoever. It's got a high roof line, so I have plenty of room up here. And it's it's amazing. There's a reason why they call this a mini minivan, because it can fit so much stuff. Shit, y'all, I am loving this Canyon Run in the Honda Fit. Now, mind you, this is a Honda Fit Sport and it is so much fun. I'm going through the mountains of Georgia, Tennessee right now, and it is a riot. Going around the corners, obviously it's on the stock suspension, so it doesn't handle as well as it could. And to be honest, I'm gonna leave it on the stock suspension because why change a good thing? Okay, so another really good takeaway from going on a really long road trip right after picking up a car is because you get such a great opportunity to test drive and get to know your new vehicle. You're gonna to get to know it in all different types of atmospheres going on a long 15 hour drive like this. You're gonna drive it during the daytime, during the nighttime, probably during some warmer weather, during some colder weather, having to use the AC heat and basically the lights and all the other options. So you really get to know your car inside and out and by the time you can get back, you already know what you need to do to it to make it better. So here I am stopping at a gas station. The Phillips were great on this car, only 25 bucks a tank and it is awesome to be able to go 350 miles on 25 bucks. Man, it is absolutely beautiful out here. It's actually, the sun is shining, but we got rain clouds up ahead. We got mountains in the distance. We're on a back country road, sweeping and swerving in the fit for the first time. It has been, again, nothing but a delight. The five speed in here is tight. It shifts great. And uh, let's drive this into the night. God, everything out here is so cool. Look at this place. My kind of people out here, man. Back roads of Tennessee, Kentucky. Here we go. All right, we are in the middle of the storm that we saw a little bit ago and still no qualms. In fact, I'm descending from a mountain right now and these twisted turns have been a lot of fun. Even in this storm, I'm still having a great time. This car has been really good and I'm just still very, very satisfied with the purchase. This experience has been great, driving in the back road mountains. Looks like a toge road in Japan over here. Not a tail of the dragon, but you know, have a little bit of Tennessee mountain uh, flavor to my drive home. So it's good, it's, uh, it's going good so far. I've only crossed the 300 mile mark at this point and uh, I got 362 miles to my next stop in Marion, Ohio to pick up a core support for the Del Sol. 
So as you guys remember, I picked up that Del Sol from Arkansas a few weeks back and I mentioned that it hit a deer. Uh, go check that video out if you haven't seen it yet. But basically, another similar video to this, I bought a car on sight unseen. Turns out that it does need a core support because it hit a deer and the headlights are not attached to the core support. They, they can't mount up properly. So I need headlights and a core. And lo and behold, I found a Del Sol parts car at Marketplace in Merritt, Ohio. The guy was generous enough to get it pulled for me quickly so that I could go pick it up on my way back through uh, north from Atlanta. And so that is the next stop. Hoping to get there as quickly as I can, but again, it's uh, 300 miles out and we'll see. Oh, by the way, update. After the first gas station fill up, I can confirm that I am averaging 34 miles to the gallon. And that is with me goosing it going, you know, 80 plus miles an hour and uh, not really trying to feather it at all. So there's a lot more left in this girl. And just like that, we are out of the store. Back into the light. We're crossing the border now from Kentucky into Cincinnati. There is the city of Cincinnati. All right, here we go. Now towards Columbus. Okay, so after getting into Ohio, it was time to go pick up the parts for the Del Sol. I quickly did pick them up. It was late at night, but then I still had a two more hour drive back to my house in Detroit. I finally did make it back to Michigan and then back to my car, which is still parked at the Detroit airport. And then after that, obviously we went in, we installed the Apple CarPlay unit, which was a transfer unit from one of my other cars. And then I finally installed the only performance modification, which is the Progress Tech rear sway bar. It is the one item that I know I needed to get. I'm keeping the rest of the suspension and everything else stock, but this is the one mod I had to have to make the car right. All right, guys, quick little update after I got the sway bar, the rear sway bar put in. This car is freaking awesome. This is the way Honda should have made it from the beginning. I really can't understand why they wouldn't put a rear sway bar in, and especially in the uh, sports package or the sports fit. The rear end feels kind of light and it doesn't really feel as sporty as you'd think you'd want it to be. But once you get that rear sway bar in, it is freaking exactly what I always wanted to be. It's a little go-kart. I can whip this thing around turns. The back end turns, rotates very well. And I love this car now. I mean, I paid $180 for that sway bar and it is hands down the best modification so far. It really enables the car to be fun and spirited exactly the way I want, and it doesn't have a ton of power, but I can take any corner I want and throw it in there at speed, and it is fine. Also on the highway is way more planted than it was before. If you're changing lanes at you know 75, 80 miles an hour, it wasn't too comfortable before. The back end kind of swayed, it had some body roll. Now you don't feel that, it is very planted. You can weave in and out of lanes, not that you want to do that, but you can if you'd want to. And so this car is a success. I absolutely love it. Out of the fleet right now, it is my favorite daily driver. It is comfortable, it's economical, it is sporty, it is fun. Everything I always thought and wanted it to be. So I'm very pleased with it. In fact, today I'm going to get it fluid filmed to protect it from the Michigan salty winters because I will be using this as, you know, a side daily driver. Ladies and gentlemen. Alright guys, and that is a wrap for this one. 
To be honest with you, before I got the fit, I always thought that the first gen CRV was the most slept on Honda, but I have found that is not true. The fit is my new favorite Honda that is kind of low key, a uh, really fucking cool car. It handles great, it's cheap, it's fun, it's reliable, it's economical. It's got these cool ground effects, which I love. I love the sport package and uh, it is absolutely everything I always wanted it to be. So that's a wrap. Thanks a lot for watching and guys, I finally get it. <laughs>